Hello everybody, I'm Dog Lightning, the rank 1 Nico main. I've been challenger the past three years in a row, and I'm here to teach you all the new items coming in season 14 and what I think are gonna be the best builds for Nico. Drop a like, comment, subscribe as always, and as this video is going up, I'm probably gonna be doing my first YouTube stream ever, so I'd appreciate you stopping by and checking out me grinding the new season. Let's get it going, baby. Okay, so for AP, I will get straight to the point, Rocket Belt is an amazing item that you should be getting every single game. It is just too good. The way it works with Nico's ult is when you ulti and then rocket belt, you get extra distance to help you catch people out. And you can combo this with an alt flash rocket belt. The item is now super cheap and super affordable and is a great snowballing item. If you take a look at alternator, it got up by 50 gold from last season to 1100, but now it lost the HP on it, but it gets 50 AP. If you want to understand how insane this is, the full item gives 60 AP. So for 1100 gold, you're almost getting the full damage value of Rocket Belt, right? The active damage, it's like the passive damage, 125 versus 183. And the AP is 60 compared to 50. So Alternator is actually just so insane. And the fact that it builds into Rocket Belt makes it more insane. So every single game mid, you're probably going to want to be rushing just Pen Boots and Rocket Belt no matter what. Now... I personally don't think Nico has mana issues. I just run mana flow ban when I go mid lane and I think it's good enough, but I know a lot of you guys struggle with your mana. So if you are looking for a mana item, you can get it first, but I would recommend getting it after Rocket Belt. Uh, you got Luden's Companion, which is like the new Luden's basically. It's a poke mana item. I think it's a bait, but again, I know a lot of you guys have issues with mana, so you can get this, or you can also get Mal Maligenance. I don't know how to pronounce it. Make fun of me in the comments about that one. Say, dog, you're so silly. But the nice thing about this is it gives 20 ability haste. So I'll say this item, I think situationally can be okay, even on like support Nico or something. Um, in the terms where the enemy team is got a lot of um, magic resist on their team, right? So like if your team's very AP heavy and you're playing, you can get this because it puts on the ground an AoE magic reduction. So if your team has a lot of AP and the enemy's going to be stacking magic resist, this item's really good. But in general, if the enemy team's not stacking magic resist, you'd rather get Ludens as your second item. Now, for people who don't have issues with mono, which should be the rest of y'all, what I think the best build is going to be is you're going to want to be going for Storm Surge next. The way Storm Surge works is when you deal 35% of the champion's maximum health in a small um, sequence of time, you get move speed and do a big um, burst lightning bolt after. So if you watch here, and I'll just do only my alt because I have a lot of AP, and watch and... Boom! See that lightning burst that comes in and does extra damage? So this is like a bursty item. Super good for how Nico wants to play. Movement speed, pen, AP, burst, everything Nico wants. So this is like your usual two item spike. After that, you're going to want to kind of get Zanyas usually. So they've changed it now. Instead of there being stopwatch, there's the seekers. It's expensive. I think they're trying to stop. They got rid of the free stopwatch rune. And I think they're trying to stop like supports from getting stopwatch and stuff. So they made it seekers. So it's like if you're committing into seekers, you have to get the freaking Zanyas. So you have your seekers, which is now your stopwatch. And then you got your Zanyas, which is a now more expensive Zanyas, but it's way more efficient. It's really good now because I believe on live server it was giving 80 AP and now it's giving 120, but it only went up by 250 gold. So it's going up by 40 AP in value, but um, you can see for 400 gold, that's 20 AP, right? So value wise this is a very good item now. Um, it was always a good item, but it got even better. So this is usually going to be your three item spike. After this, um, what you're going to want to be usually doing if you're going full AP Nico is if they're building uh, magic resist, you're probably going to want to go void staff, right? But if they're not building magic resist, this is where you have a bit of option between the build. Um, I think death cap is still the best if you just want best build. But if you're lagging behind stuff, I think the new shadow flame is also going to be very good. Um, it gives you a crit when you're hitting people below 35% um, HP, dealing 20% more damage. So you go in for a full Nico combo and you bring them to low HP and you're doing better damage. Part of the reason I don't like this is because if they're already full HP on like a tanky target, right? It's like, it's going to be hard to really bring them low to where you get this. And a lot of squishies are going to one shot anyways. Like say it's like a bruiser, you go in full combo and they're probably going to be above 35% HP the whole time. So it kind of doesn't get use against a squishy target. They're going to get one shot anyways. So it's kind of like a mint item in my opinion, but you can go this if you don't have the income for death cap and then void staff. There is an option instead of void staff that I think is also very good on Nico. It's probably honestly better overall because it's like our build doesn't have very much CDR right now, right? We got 15 here. We got none on, uh, on uh, Zanyas anymore. I didn't realize it lost it. Okay, so this item lost actually gold efficiency there. So it probably is pretty even. So yeah, we got no CDR in our build. So we're probably going to want to go um, Crypto Bloom. And as you can see here with this build right now, it would do an AoE 400 heal for you and your whole team. So you go and you hit a big ulti and then you just AoE heal your whole team 400. So this is probably what you're going to go. You're only losing 10% pen. And again, Nico doesn't do well at killing tanks anyways. So this is probably your standard. What I would say is probably going to be like the standard Nico full burst one shot. 
Now I'm gonna go into some other AP builds, but this is just like what I think is the main build. So again, Rocket Belt, Storm Surge, Zanyas, Death Cap, Crypto Bloom, where you can also sub in potentially a Shadow Flame instead um, if you are not, you know, as ahead in income. So I'll go through all the items, but I'm going to quickly go over one more build that I think is also going to be very strong next season for when you're facing really bruisery teams and you want to be doing more DPS rather than burst because they're very tanky. And I think it's a very good top lane build. I like to run this build top versus bruisers. So first, um, you get Rod of Ages first. Really good. I mean, the thing is, is yes, it hurts your early game a bit, but Nico stomps lane anyways. Like if you just come to lane, for instance, with this catalyst with 300 H 50 HP and mana, you can just infinitely trade and your base damage is so high you'll still be able to solo kill and it'll start to scale up into rocket belt second right so now this two item spike you're gonna have 350 hp plus the stacking hp of another 200 then you're gonna get another 300 hp off this and then after that we're gonna build another hp item leandri's which is another 300 ap yes it's not the highest ap build but nico has really high um, high ratios and base damage, so you'll still with this build be able to one-shot squishies, but you're going to be more bruisery and durable to get into a fight and do stuff. And then after these three items, I really like Nasher's Tooth. It gives you more some CDR that you are lacking in this build, and it gives you that sustained DPS, so a tank's going in, or a bruiser's going in, and they can't really burn. Like, if you were full AP one-shot, I really goes on you. She one-shots you, and you can't really do anything back. But if you go the Rod of Ages build, she can't really kill you, and then you have, like, Leandri's ticking in, and you do that the same DPS. So this is the kind of build that I would kind of like to go versus, like, bruiser champions is this kind of a build. And by the way, I used to say Leandri sucked on Nico because it gave mana, and Nico doesn't want mana. She wants HP, and I think it's a pretty good item now. I mean, you get the percent HP burn for Nico, and you're getting HP. I think Leandri's um, got a lot better, personally. All right, so let's go over all the new items that I haven't talked about yet for AP. So uh, Morello's, um, it's good. I think you want to try and let someone else get it if you can, but it's because like there's just better items for you, but you're also pretty good at applying it. It is now only 2,200 gold. It is super gold efficient. 90 AP for 200. Like this is giving you 100 AP for 2,900. Obviously it gives you the, the 10 pen, but the damage from the Storm Raider is going to be less than the Grievous Wounds, right? So you're realistically losing 10 pen and 10 AP and you're getting it for way cheaper. Like it's a very good item. It's just when you get full build, it's like there's better items. But if you need anti-heal, it's good. So Morello is really good. Um, right Lies is still a pretty terrible item on Nico, if you ask me. The slow effect doesn't really do anything because your root, root thumbs, the slow does nothing. Your alt stuns them, so the, which does nothing. It doesn't apply off your empower auto, so it's just for your Qs, and it doesn't really do much. So in general, not a very good item still. Uh, we talked about these. Oh, Horizon is a bad item. It's really, now it's just like, it has a long cooldown of 30 seconds, and it's more for like long range artillery people to do AOE reveals. You aren't going to want this on Nico. Um, alrighty, so Cosmic Drive, still not a great item on Nico. If you get full build, you can sell your boots for this, though, or, but I think Lich Bane is better in that circumstance. It gives pretty similar move speed. This will give you more move speed over time, but it gives you burst. Um, Lich Bane or Cosmic sell boots for. Riftmaker kind of sucks still. I thought maybe it'd be better because they made it so that the Omni Vamp is, heals the full amount for AoE spells instead of 33%, but it takes you, um, six seconds in combat or something like that to get the Omni Vamp, and it's like... You don't really need Omni Vamp once you're in combat. You need Omni Vamp out of combat so you can sustain yourself off farming minions. So it doesn't really help um, in that regard. And one more really fun item, Banshees. So Banshees is a 30 second cooldown now instead of 40 seconds, which gets reduced even more. If you have um, Ingenious Hunter, it gets reduced down to 20 seconds. So every 20 seconds out of combat, you can get Banshees. Um, quick note, obviously, this stuff still... It, it's it shows through your passive. Hopefully this gets fixed sometime because like this is not okay for Nico. So, you know, if you're pissed off about this, let me know in the comments and I'll try to uh, see if I can get this fixed. I already told Flox about it, but who knows? But um, a really cool thing is that the component of it is like Zanya's. It um it gives you a shield just for the component. Um, but it's a one minute cooldown instead of 40 second, 30 seconds. But the interesting thing is, again, if you get Ingenious Hunter on this, it goes down to 40 seconds. Old Banshees on live server is 40 seconds. So if you have Ingenious Hunter with just this 1800 Verdant Barrier, you actually get Banshees for 1800 gold, which is pretty good for especially support or especially in games where you just want the shield, but you don't want to finish it yet because it's not worth it. Like say the enemy team has like no poke, but just the Blitzcrank hook, and it'll always block the Blitzcrank hook, and you can just buy this only and never get hooked by Blitzcrank, right, for 1800 gold. It's a pretty interesting item. But, um, yeah, that's it for the AP items. So if I missed any builds, oh, yeah, and Magi's got cheaper uh, for some reason. The best item in the game just for some reason got cheaper. I can't remember if they changed any of the stacks, but, I mean, cheaper is better in my opinion because you're investing less into this, and you get... A lot of the times when you get Magi's, you'll lose your stacks and have to sell it, which means you're losing less gold on the sell option too. So 
yeah, if you have any questions about these builds, let me know. And we'll go into now the support builds. For support, Nico, elephant in the room to start off. There's a brand new support item. All right. And this new support item, how it works is when you poke the enemy, it stacks it, or you can farm minions to stack. You can do both. So that's cool for Nico, who can also turn into a melee champion and stack the melee one at melee and help you push. So that's cool. But um, the really cool thing is that when it upgrades to max, you get to upgrade it to a thing. So there's a new thing here where I can fully stack items and I can stack it twice. So when you fully stack it, you can now upgrade it to any of these choices. Now this is where Lee gets a little bit depressing um, for Nico. I think the best one possible is the Celestial Opposition, but it gets a problem because it's like Banshees and I'm really knock on wood um, hoping that it, it gets fixed. If there's any like bugs or anything with Nico right now that you want known, like you should let me know too in the comments, but this bug is like probably the most devastating for us Nico support mains. This is the most devastating bug. It's like the Banshees where it doesn't, uh, it shows through your passive. Whoopsies. So your passive becomes useless if you have this. And the reason this sucks is because it's by far the best one. So the way it works is when the shield's up, it's Shattered Queen. It's a 20 second Shattered Queen, so it's very easy to get back up. And it blocks 25% damage for two seconds when popped. And on melee champions, it blocks 35% damage. The reason this is so good on Nico is because if you use your passive to turn into a melee champion, you can get the 35% damage reduction, right? So this basically can become, because Zhonya's became super expensive for support Nico. like I don't think I'll really buy this that much anymore. It's so expensive. This is kind of acting as our new Zhonya's. If I turn into a melee champion, like they can't burst me. But the problem is, is it reveals Nico through things. So I'm probably, um, an interesting thing is it sells for 160 and only costs 400. So selling it, you lose 240 gold for it. So I'm probably going to be um, throughout my games swapping it out. Um, it's only because I didn't actually stack. I stacked it through the thing. But in game, if you sell it, um, you can buy a fully stacked another one. So at any point, you can swap out your support item for only 240 gold um, opportunity cost. Where's the thing where I upgrade? Okay, stack items. Stack it. So yeah, at any point in the game for only 240 gold, you can sell it and then buy a new one. So... I think it, it, it's a hard choice. I think Solus Lay is the best one for support. Even though it's not damage, it's numbers in terms of healing, 120 to you and an ally, and 90 movement speed for four seconds for you and your ally. It means if you go in and hit an alt, your ally can get in quicker, and you can maybe use the movement speed to get out. It's a lot of HP, 120 HP earlier in the game. At the sort of late game, this will become way less efficient than the Celestial, at which point I'll probably swap it out for late game team fighting where enemies can basically one shot you. I'll probably swap it out and just lose my passive late game. But I'm probably gonna early game be going for the Slay, which will just make it when I land a root. Oop, you can see this guy got a heal and we both have move speed um, when you hit a root or your ulti. Um, so this one's probably what I'll be going for, but I'll tell you the other ones because they're not bad either. Um, this one makes it after you use a spell your next auto attack will mark the enemy to take 7% increased damage from all sources. I don't think this one's that great because usually what you're going to be doing is you're going to be ultying EQ, right? And then you're going to auto now and it's like your damage is already gone. It's not like even shroud where it applies at the start. But um, I think this one could be good if it's like you're just peeling a carry. Like say if the enemy has like a tank that's diving your ADC and all you're going to be doing is peeling a tank all game like a Orn or something. I think this could get a lot of value for marking it for your ADC. Um, cause it goes up to 12% damage they'll take, right? 12% or 8%, like 7% was even shroud, right? So even from range, it's more than even shroud and for melee, it's like 12%. So I think this one's going to be pretty good. Um, if you're peeling tanks, whoopsies. Um, all right. And then the last one is, uh, where is it? It's right here. You got the Zaz, Zax realm spike. I think this one's not great. I know most people are going to get it as a bait. But um, it's like the enemy can like, it's like a poke one. It's like you hit poke and do damage, but Nico's not a poke champ. She's an all in burst champ. So at a certain point, it's like, like we can look right now, like how much damage it did, right? It's like, it's not crazy amount. Obviously this guy doesn't have a lot of HP, but like, I don't know. I find it hard to believe that doing an extra hundred damage in a combo in a team fight matters more than having the slay and having an extra hundred HP for yourself. Maybe I'm wrong about this, but because my playstyle, you're going to see my other... It's really playstyle. If you want to go Zhonya's, right? Rocket Belt Zhonya's, this will definitely be good to give you burst. As you guys know, I like to play more of like a utility. So this is where I get excited about Nico's support right now, right? So I'll be going Slay into Celestial so I can be, you know, beefier from that. And my item build is probably going to be every game we're going to be rushing Rocket Belt first no matter what. Because this item is just 
too good for, for the amount of cost. Like, it's just Nico's best item by far. 300 HP. And again, the, the dash, like, if I dodge, like, a CC like this, that can, like, block a lot of damage effectively, right? So, like, that 300 HP could easily be, like, 600, right? If I use the dash to dodge something. So, every game, no matter what, we're going to go Rocket Belt. Now, if you are going, like, the tankier options, I'm probably thinking that a lot of games I'm going to go Shirelia's next. I'm super good, 2200 gold, 55 AP, it gives movement speed, ability haste, and the active. So it's like, I can like pop like Shirelia's W, Rocket Belt, with right, and I can find these big huge flanks. I had the movement speed from base, so it makes it a bit weird, right? But I can like go over here, right? So it's like, I could be here and I could like go like this with Shirelia's, and then like hit my big Rocket Belt and like go far, right? I can use it to disengage fights, super versatile items. So I think this is gonna be like my go-to secondary item. And then after that, usually the way the games go in the longer stages is like you start to become really like squishy and like lots of AP. So I think like Abyssal Mask will be my next. And this will probably be like my pretty core build, to be honest, and then go for my Wardstone. And at this spike, like late games, you start your damage starts to fall off, right? I'm going to be late game selling this and swapping out for my Celestial. And now in my late game, right, if I turn into a melee champion, I got a 35% damage shield. I got my Shirelias for movement. I got my Rocket Belt for movement. I got Abyssal Mass to give me magic resist and increase the damage the enemy takes. This is probably gonna be my pretty standard build, but I'll show you all the items you can sub in here. So again, obviously, um, you can if you want. You can go the Zaz and you can go um, Zanyas here. Wherever Zanyas is, there's Zanyas, right? Like this is fine, kind of a build too. Um, but if we're sticking just to support items, um, we'll go through all the items here and talk about them. So again, Morello's crazy good. Like anytime your team needs anti-heal, you're just going to always be picking this up 2000. Like instead of the Shirelia second, if you need anti-heal Morello's, it's just 90 AP for 2200 gold. Super good. And another AP option is uh, mandate. Mandate is also pretty good. It's proc now does 12% of their current HP damage. So if the enemy team is very, very tanky, you can get this and like be like shredding percent HP off of them. Um, so yeah, that's my thoughts about the AP support items. In terms of like the tankier support items, there's lots of options also. Um, Locket is super good, 2200 gold. The active shield, really great versus like AOE teams or if there's like assassins diving your ADC. Knight's Vow, again, if you have a very, very fed ADC, great item to pick up. Redemption, actually a pretty good item. I always love Redemption. I don't pick it up enough in the past couple of seasons. Even though it gives heal and shield power, which kind of sucks, it's still just like the amount of money you're spending for the amount of HP, it gives you 200 HP plus the active is going to give you about another 300 HP. The thing's giving you like already right there, like 500 HP, right? That's like 200 more than the Knight's Vow. Um, it's it, it's pretty good and you can use it to like be mid and help your slip pushers. You can use it to check Baron. Um, I think also Mikhail's is a decent item. I don't build it enough either, but like say they have like Fiddlesticks and they're like Fiddlesticks is like ulting and fearing your ADC and you can just break the fear or like a Lissandra. Pretty good. And um, yeah, so then there's also Zeke's. Zeke's got a lot better. So how Zeke's works now is when you ulti, it puts like an AOE circle around you that slows enemies that are within it. And your allies who attack the person in it will do extra damage. Um, it's a niche item, but it's pretty good at peeling bruisers, right? So if the enemy team has like Irelia Jax diving your ADC and you like ulti them, and then they're like AOE slowed out of it because this thing's on them um, by 30%. So not a bad tanky item if you want to get like a tanky bruiser item. And then you got your normal tank items. You got your Thorn Mail, which is good if you need anti-heal. Um, yeah, that's like pretty much it, right? You got your Force of Nature if you want some hard magic resist. Um, a theme has changed is always a great item for 25 and gold. Super good at like reducing tenacity on people. Um, if you didn't know if they have tenacity, you can't actually like ulti. And, like say this is a cane and this cane has tenacity. If you hit it ulti and then try to root, you can dodge this root by ultiing you or something. But if you have that and you put it on him and he has reduced tenacity, you can like hit your combo. So it can be pretty good. Um, Randuins. None of the new ones are really that great. There's one that gives you like a magic shield or whatever. Yeah, this one, I haven't really tested it out, but it's probably like, I don't think I'd get it for the cost. Like, I think I'd rather just have Force of Nature with the move speed, but I could be wrong. I haven't really tested this out. And then there is this new item, Trailblazer. So Trailblazer is basically like the support um, version of um, the one that gives you move speed, whatever it's called. Uh, scuff. Dead Man's Plate. Um, but it puts a path behind you that gives your team move speed if they walk through it. The problem with this is that it shows through your passive again. So if you're getting the Celestial Op Edition where it already gives away your passive, you can pick this up. But in general, you're not going to really want to pick this up because it ruins your passive. But yeah, that's it for the support items. In general, for support, I'm sad Even Shroud's gone. But like, there's lots of viable items here, man. I really think that most of my games, though, will be like 
me going slay or opposition. I might just go opposition every time. It's, it's just so good. It's so sad that it breaks Nico's passive. But like that into like Shirelia's slash like Morello's or just straight into like an Abyssal Mask with like maybe like Magickers' boots versus a full AP team and just get really tanky. Um, again, another cool option actually is if you go Ingenious Hunter and you want to go like an AP build, I can see like just rushing like just the Verdant Barrier with Ingenious Hunter getting it down to a 40 second cooldown versus like a Blitzcrank Hook into then like, you know, this where you get your stop. Wow, I can't even buy it after I've used it. You can get like, you know, Verdant Barrier into like Shattered Arm Guard and then after that you finish your Zhanyas and then you can finish your Banshees after, right? Um, Crypto Bloom, very good for support too if you go an AP build because now we're healing our team AoE 300 after you hit an ulti and yourself. So yeah, I'm excited for support, but uh, let's let's talk about ADC a little because it's been going on for a long time. So ADC Nico, not much has really changed for ADC Nico that much in terms of your build, but things have changed because there's no mythics, obviously. Um, we are going to still want to just be rushing our Bork first. Um, now your first attack against enemy slows them by 15% for one second before the live one is after three autos, you get move speed. Now your first auto slows them, so this will help you go for like the single auto attack. They get slowed and maybe line up your route, so that's nice for Nico. After that, you're going to want to be going Rage Blade again because of the fact that Rage Blade, how it works with Nico's passive and double stacking to give you the stacks quicker. Now, the sad thing about Rage Blade is they basically split Rage Blade into two items. Before, Rage Blade used to give you pen, magic, and AD pen, which was really nice for you because you're building an AD build, but you do AP damage. Um, they split it now into two items, unfortunately. So... If you, uh, you, you're going to have to spend more gold now to get like sort of the same two item effect. They built this new item called Termius, which makes it so that every other auto goes back and forth between giving you armor and magic resist and the next auto giving you magic pen and armor pen, armor, magic resist, armor, magic pen. Um, so it also helps get the, the Ginsu's double plying helps you stack it quicker. So you can see here like one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And now it's like fully stacked. So now I've got the full stackage of the, uh, Magic resist, armor, armor pen, and magic pen. So this is probably going to be a pretty solid three item spike. But um, the Termius really scales really late. I think you're going to want to still before Termius a lot of games probably just go for the wit's end. Like it gets 20% tenacity now, which is really good. So it's like probably most games I would imagine it's going to be more like this. But um, the build hasn't really changed that much other than that. I mean like Stag Shiv Shill Stucks sucks. If you want like the best DPS, if you go Kraken Slayer third, it's going to be like the best DPS possible, but like no utility. Right, so it's like a full build will be something like this usually, right? For what you're going to be building on AD Nico. Uh, I wish I had more to talk about AD Nico. There's not much. I mean, Nasher's Tooth is still kind of a bait in my opinion. I think Nasher's Tooth is better for full AP Nico because it gives you, um, you know, stats that are really good for AP Nico because it gives you an AP ratio on the on right. It's like if I build this, it's doing 58 on hit, right? Like that's less than my Wit's End, right? That's like less than my Kraken. Um. It's, it's not bad. It's not bad. But usually, if you really need AP spread, usually when I like um, Nasher's Tooth is if I get a Zhonya's with AD Nico, right? So if you go Zhonya's and then you get the Nasher's Tooth, it's not bad because now you can see it's up to 82 damage, which means it's on par with late game Wit's End. So it's like not too bad if you're like going for the defensive Zhonya's, which I do think defensive Zhonya's is very good on Nico AD. I think going like uh, Bork, Rage Blade, um, Wit's End into Zhonya's and then finishing Nasher's Tooth is a very good build. But yeah, in general, there's not much that's changed. The the AD items are kind of stagnant. There's just this new one item, the Termius, which I think is pretty good. But after doing some tests with damage, it's not crazy good. I think it's like a better really late game item just if they've stacked a lot of armor and magic resist. But yeah, Rage Blade, you still got the Runons, which applies and gives you the extra. But I still think it's a bait because I think it's just why I get it when you can have Rage Blade. But anyways, I'm going to stop rambling on because I don't really have much to say about the ADC build. So sorry if you're here really for that. Uh, you can check out my friend Lol Wero. He makes YouTube videos on AD Nico. And let him know that I told you to go there. Anyways, check out my stream. I should be streaming on YouTube when this goes up. Make sure you like, comment on the video. It really helps. For people who didn't know, I kind of streamed full time and made content full time for the past four years. And I kind of quit making content three weeks ago. I had a lot of online hate crap happen on Twitter and it got to me and I got like really upset and depressed about it. And like, I'm fine now and stuff, but it's just like my numbers on everything started to go down. It's cause my TikTok got perma banned and stuff. And it was just like, felt like a good time for me to start doing something else in my life. So I'm not gonna be making as much content this season. I did the previous seasons. I'll only be streaming every now and then when I feel like it for an hour or two, instead of like six hour streams, because I'm working on my spare time on learning Unreal Engine so that I can, uh, I got a degree in computer science, four years experience at high level gaming and understanding and content creation. I'm learning Unreal Engine on my own time. 
so I can start applying to gaming studios and maybe get some experience so that one day I can maybe apply for Riot or a gaming studio that I love because I love lots of gaming studios. So that's what I'm doing right now. So show me love in the comments. It really helps. I, I've never, as you guys know, I've said it before, I've never really had crazy success on YouTube. I don't know. The algorithm on this doesn't agree with me, but I'll just stop, stop rambling on. Like, comment, subscribe. I love you guys. Good luck on the new season.